This one, it's not about racing cars, but it is about this. It's about oil, engines, and you guessed it, your world the sea. Out at sea and here on land, where you get engines and moving parts, sure as night follows day, you also get this. Waste oil, dirty water, sludge you want to get rid of. Now here on land, getting rid of that oil, that waste, sludge, oily water, not a problem. But in our world, at sea, tell me about it. It's a whole different ball game. A ball game that can leave you, your job, your future and your family exposed and at risk. So, stick around. The next 20 minutes or so could be the most important of your working week. They could keep you in a job, out of a place like this, and out of jail. Ever since Marpole came into force more than 20 years ago, international law has been very clear about one thing. Ships caught polluting the oceans are breaking the law. Dump oily waste over the side and you, your ship and the company you work for could be in deep million dollar trouble. Stuff like this gives you guys a problem. Because oily water waste like this just keeps on coming. Every day when you run engines or machinery, you also get leaks of oil, spills of water and chemical waste that work their way down here into the bilges. And it all has to go somewhere. The one place it can't go is out there, over the side. Oily bilge water and sludge waste, it's not a new problem. It's been with ships since engines were invented. What is new is the pressure on seafarers to dispose of it in a way that doesn't hurt the environment and the penalties lying in wait for us if we screw up. What we're talking about is down here, so bear with me. It's a bit noisy. Seen one of these before? Sure you have. It's an oily water separator, a vital piece of kit. But neglect it, ignore it, misuse it, and it can land you personally in a whole heap of trouble. Is the OWS system on your ship being used properly? In theory, it's simple enough. Oily water is drained through and collected in a dirty bilge water holding tank. Then it's pumped through a series of filters which separate out the oil from the water. On passage, the clean water is then piped over the side into the sea and the oily gunk separated off and returned to a collecting tank for incineration or discharge ashore. Simple, really. Oh, and there's something called an OCM, an oil content monitor that takes a continuous sample when the OWS system is running to make sure that only clean water goes over the side. It shines a light through the sample to an optical sensor and, since oil droplets diffract and diffuse light, a change in signal at the sensor will tell if oil is present in the water that's supposed to be clean. The sensor then sounds an audible alarm, stops the flow outboard and recycles the dirty water back into the ship's inboard system. On your ship, make sure you're familiar with your own calibration method. That's the theory anyway. And that recycled water? The IMO says it's got to be clean. How clean? With less than 15 parts oil per million. Cleaner sometimes than seawater itself. Clean enough to drink? Uh, 
I don't think so. It smells like a petrol station anyway. Cheers. Tough new rules about what we can and what we can't do at sea come from here, the IMO, the International Maritime Organization. Now that might be the River Thames over there, but sometimes it feels like the IMO are an awful long way from water. Because you and I, we live in the real world. And not everything out here works like it says in the book, right? Right, so, a couple of points. One, the new tougher laws about OWS and marine pollution, they're made for the environment, not for seafarers or for shipping companies. They're there to keep the oceans clean and they're backed up by the courts. So, screw up, dump oil at sea, get found out and you, your ship and your company will be in an ocean of trouble. Two, if it were just oil and water that get mixed in the scuppers, find their way down to the bilges and got pumped up to the oily water separator, then we all might be home free. I say might, but it's not. Remember, this is the real world we're talking about, not some squeaky clean laboratory that doesn't move around with a lot of pretty girls running around in white coats. So, we're not just talking oil, we're talking cleaners, rust, antifreeze, soot, mud, soaps and solvents that dissolve oil and water. The list goes on and on. Which gives this fella a digestion problem. Faced with all that being pumped through its insides, it either shuts down altogether, sounds the alarm in protest, or break down altogether. There's another problem too. There are lots of different parts and models of these separators and lots of different manuals too. Your best bet? Proper maintenance, good tank management and professional standards of training and best practice. Sounds up in the clouds, fine in theory but doesn't work down here at the sharp end. I don't buy that. As a professional seafarer, it's your right to be trained in the proper use, care and maintenance of equipment. Ignorance is no excuse. It never has been. Not down here. And not in court either. Bottom line, it's your reputation, your future that's on the line down here when the inspector comes a-calling. So take whatever steps that you need to stay on the right side of the law. Or do you really want your children to visit you in jail? Look, I know what you're thinking. The pressure on guys like you can be intense. There's never enough time, is there? Pressure from the company, from the boss at sea, from the ship herself. Ships generate a lot of oil and dirty, contaminated water. Anything from a couple of these to thousands of these every day they're at sea. Which, like I say, gives you guys a problem. Where's it all going to go? To a certain kind of seafarer, it's all a bit of a chore, isn't it? I mean, why bother? 15 parts per million? The ocean's a big place. Your oily waste would be just another little drop in the ocean. So, why not turn off that oil control monitor? Pipe the oil residues and oily waste overboard for a bit of spare pipe when you're miles from the nearest land. Problem solved. If you did, you wouldn't be alone. When Exxon Valdez ran out of sea in Alaska in 1989, she spilled 11 million gallons of oil into the sea. It was an ecological disaster. Yet today, each year, Seafarers still dump, illegally, millions of gallons of oil into the oceans of the only planet we can leave to our kids. Nice, eh? But hey, 
Who's counting? And besides, you'd be doing the company a favour, right? And who'd blame you anyway? He would. A port state inspector with the power to arrest you, detain your ship, take your company to court. In short, ruin your entire day. Authorities aren't dumb, and they're not blind either. And they've started a new crackdown, which means that when they come aboard, they're looking for evidence of illegal dumping out at sea, of tampering with seals and flanges. They're checking oil record books, tank sounding logs, ship's fuel manifests. Your dates, figures and facts better stack up. Guys like him can go through your ship like it's a murder scene and they're looking for clues. They'll track documents and records from months, years back, and drag them into court. They'll check out your engine room like it's a forensic scene of a crime. Mess with these guys? I don't think so. Still tempted to bend the rules? Don't be. Don't even think about it. There's a couple of seafarers who'd be delighted to put you straight. Know what they did? They came up with something called a magic pipe. They undid a few bolts, bypassed the existing pipework and the oily water separator, and let the dirty stuff flow straight back into the sea through a little bit of magic pipe all of their own. They thought they'd get away with it, save themselves a fortune on discharge fees back on shore. The magic didn't last. Detected by US Coast Guard inspectors when they reached US waters, the company ended up in court. A place like this. There, the company was fined $10 million, while the chief engineer of another vessel faces up to six years in jail. Other men, seafarers just like you, face a 10-year jail sentence and a $500,000 personal fine for trying the magic pipe trick. Worth it? What do you think? My advice? Marpol requires ships to keep a paper track of oil between ship and shore. Period. That's the law. So, stick to the rules. And if you don't know the rules, ask. Find out before it's too late. It's your job on the line if you break the rules and get caught. So, remember the ISM code. Plan what you do. Do what you plan and record it. Play it straight. Oh, and one final thing. All these laws and rules, they're aimed to do one thing, to make these seas and oceans of ours a safer and cleaner place for us all. Yeah, I'll go along with that. It's not smart or clever to break the law, risk jail, dump waste and pollute the oceans that give you your living. So stick to the law and make sure you're a winner too.